Hi everybody. Hello. We're here in the kitchen again and today we're going to be making a dish that's good for a lot of people. It's lasagna. It's bolognese. And bechamel. We're not making it with ricotta. We're making our own bechamel and if you haven't had lasagna this way, you're going to love it. It's easy. It's delicious. It's the way it should be made. Okay, you guys, here's the deal about lasagna. Most folks here in the States make it with ricotta and lots of shredded mozzarella cheese. The Northern Italian lasagna is made with bechamel or white sauce instead of ricotta and mozzarella. Bechamel is easy to make with ingredients most people have in their kitchens. Milk, butter, flour, that's it. It makes such a difference and it gives a lasagna a rich yet lighter feeling than its denser American style cousin. Let's get started. There are three components to this dish, meat sauce, bechamel sauce, and noodles. That's it. We made the sauce ahead of time, and I'll put a link here to the bolognese sauce video we made. This is pretty much heated through, it's warmed. I'm gonna scooch it over to the side. I'm gonna keep it on a back burner. So um, I, need, I need four cups of whole milk. What, in, what you're gonna be doing with this milk is you're gonna be um, just scalding it, warming it up, and get, getting it ready to put in with the butter and the flour. Ouch, that was hot. <laughs> to put in with the butter and the flour that's gonna go in here to make our best melt. Melt the butter and then add the flour and whisk for a minute. You want it to be a paste, but you don't want it to brown. Ouch. Okay, so now we whisk in the milk little by little. Okay, that's good for now. Let's incorporate this. See how it's bubbling and getting kind of thick like that? Okay, that's good. Let's incorporate that. It's wonderfully rich and fragrant. And, um, how, well, it's not, it's fragrant of butter, but what gets wonderful is when you put, uh, usually I put a little freshly gra grated nutmeg in there. I don't think I have any whole nutmeg. I think I'm going to have to use something that's already been grated. Oh, yeah, that's the, the, that was what I was going to say. The timing. Timing. So Steve Martin always said that he would say, the thing about co good comedy is you have to have great timing. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old joke. Um, anyway, uh, the timing of the lasagna is very important because like, you don't want this bechamel to get too sticky um, before you do the pasta because then it won't spread right so you just it's a little bit of a juggle, juggling game like this is you know warmish that's good um, the pasta you know we got to boil it so it's just you get a little practiced at it and you figure out you know getting all the timing right timing timing timing, timing. timing right bring the sauce to a boil and then reduce the heat Simmer for about eight to 10 minutes while stirring. Add nutmeg and salt and pepper. Oh, now it's getting thick. Oh, hello, darling. Go ahead and start boiling the noodles. Use regular dry lasagna noodles. Don't be a lazy daisy and get the no boil kind. Do it the right way. The no boil kind dry out the dish too much. Plus boiling pasta is easy. It's not like I'm asking you to do calculus, come on. Cook them, but only till they're very al dente and have some tooth. Otherwise, they will be overcooked because they cook more in the sauce when they're in the oven. After you strain the pasta, it's time for assembly. Grease the pan. Start with either the bechamel or the meat sauce. Do not start with the noodles because they have a tendency to get stuck to the bottom. So layer it. I do some pasta, some sauce, some pasta, some white sauce, some pasta, some red sauce. Do it however you feel comfortable, but this is the way I did it. You must end with a layer of bechamel. Then on the very top, I layer Parmesan cheese. For all you cheese heads out there, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of mozzarella. Just a little bit. Make sure to tent the foil on the lasagna, otherwise the foil is going to stick to the cheese. 
put in a 375 degree oven. All righty. And, and we're done with that. We'll have to wait for 40, 25 minutes. I'm gonna take a look at it. Now we're gonna make the salad. Right, with the... I think what we should do, right, is make the fennel salad. It's fennel and grapefruit and, and pistachios. What are you gonna do when all this coronavirus stuff is over? I'm gonna go and take a walk on the beach near the water. Maybe put my feet in the water. In the ocean. You know what I'd like to do? I want to hug somebody. Oh, I want to hug somebody. <clears throat> I need to hug somebody besides you. <laughs> You're the only person I'm allowed to hug right now. Uh, do you think um, handshakes? Yeah, I could hug a man. <laughs> <laughs> no comment on that one. <laughs> These are the fennel bulbs. They're beautiful. They um, they're impart a wonderful flavor. I'm just cutting the, uh, you cut the bottoms off. And then I get a mandolin. You know, it slices things very thinly here on this blade, on this blade. And then um, I place it, and then I just take this fennel bowl. And this is what it looks like. It's shaved very thin. You can see this is like. Peel the grapefruit and cut into segments. Make sure to get the sweetest grapefruit you can find in the store. I like pomelos or red grapefruits. Oh, the smell. Smell that. It's so fresh and so good. Chop some of the top leaves and sprinkle on the shaved fennel. To make the dressing, it's just simply olive oil, a little bit of honey, and some lemon juice. You can use vinegar too if you like. Just adjust to taste. Oh my god. Okay, I mean that's that's a lot of honey. Yeah, but it was too. This tastes like too candy. Lemony. No, it doesn't. Mom, this tastes like put candy. Put some more lemon in it then. That all makes you fart. <laughs> Wait, you know all of this is being for. Now. Now it's ready. I want to add some salt. I have this gorgeous pink salt. Now the recipe, really, that I got this from says flaky sea salt. I don't have it, so I'm using this. But if you have, like, um, Maldon sea salt, use that. And then, um, crack, this is the big thing that makes a huge difference in this, is cracked black pepper. Now, I have made this dish with also mint. You can put in there, is nice doesn't necessarily need it. And as you can see, I'm very generous, very generous with the pepper. And it's so, I mean, it smells so citrusy and peppery with a little anise flavor behind it. Oh my God. That is perfect, perfect, perfect. It's crunchy. Tang. Perfect. So that's gonna go really well with like a hot, bubbly lasagna. All right, I'm very happy with that. Time to check on the lasagna. Uncover and bake for another 10 to 15 minutes. Keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't burn. The guests have started to arrive just in time. So nice to see you again. I'm gonna leave mom to socializing with our guests while I check the oven. The lasagna looks and smells fantastic. Delicious. I've never <laughs> had anything that was not delicious in this house. Wow, it's really good. Mom, that was time consuming, but worth it, don't you think? I sure do, and I'm glad we had that salad. Salud.